Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, listening to this debate, it strikes me that there's a few things that have been left out of this discussion, and um, I do support the uh, gentleman from Florida's uh, amendment, and, the, and I follow the, the ideology of this in the process. One of the things I would say to that is that as I listen to the gentleman from Tennessee address this subject matter and uh, raise his voice pretty strongly about the allegations of Obama versus Russians versus Putin, I would make a couple of points on this. One is, it's pretty clear that the Obama administration sent their people over to Israel to work against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pretty much openly significant dollars invested in that campaign over there. The President of the United States, with at least the moral support of the people that had worked for him in the country of Israel, seeking to shift the results of the election against the seated Prime Minister, Bibi Netanyahu. Then, um, the gentleman, uh, Ray, no, I won't, I won't yield. I have a lot of things I must say, but thank you. Uh, then, then, the gentleman uh, did object to U.S. tax dollars being used. I just came back not that long ago from the Balkans, where I sat in a place uh, like Macedonia. And there I learned that the United States government, borrowing money from China and Saudi Arabia, had handed over somewhere at least $5 million in contracts transferred through USAID into George Soros organizations that were used to manipulate elections in the Balkans. And that's just particularly Macedonia, not including the neighboring countries that are there. And some of that money was used to translate Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals into Macedonians to distribute the books and the rules for radicals and the actions of radicals were manifested within the election efforts uh, in that part of the world. So um, I would say that the Obama administration is a long ways from clean on this as far as being involved in elections in other countries, not to mention little comments like the British, if you vote Brexit, you're going to have to go to the back of the queue. So uh, that's a taxpayer dollars piece of this. But the long string that we should be looking at with this investigation and special counsel that is our request here, it goes a long ways back. It goes clear back to Huma Abedin, Anthony Weiner, 650,000 emails, which we still have access to. And the question that was answered to us by James Comey, which is, there was nothing to see there. We did a fast software search of 650,000 emails, and in the case of Huma Abedin and Anthony Weiner sharing laptop and sharing emails, there was nothing new in 650,000 emails. And what we've done in this Congress so far is just taken his word for that. Now, it seemed fairly logical to take his word at the time until you examine the investigation that he conducted of Hillary Clinton. Oh, by the way, it was a matter. The investigation that had Cheryl Mills, her chief of staff, as her chief counsel in the room with Hillary Clinton and both of them had a plea bargain of some kind. Uh, they were exempted from prosecution for some by, by limited terms. But in any case, when you have this chief of staff who's a subject of investigation too, they're as counsel to the person who is the subject of the investigation. And we ask under oath, and I ask these questions of, Comey, or, or of uh, Loretta Lynch and Comey under oath, and that is, where's the copy of the transcript? Where's the, where's the audio files? Where's the video files? Who was in the room? We don't have the answers to any of that except no, there was no, there were no, if there were notes taken, we don't know who they are or where they are. If there was any transcript of, of the deposition, then that doesn't exist either. Neither do the tapes of either audio or video. This is what looks like on its face is a sham investigation. Plus, they destroyed a tremendous amount of information, at least 30,000 emails, crushed hard drives, bought bleach bit, hired outside contractors to scrub the emails up, and were to take James Comey's word for this, that there wasn't enough substance there to bring a prosecution, even though on a year ago, July 5th, James Comey delivered 15 minutes of the summary of a prosecution that was completely convincing to me until they got down to the last couple of sentences of that presentation, which is, well, we can't prove intent. Well, curiously, there's no requirement for intent in the two statutes that appear to have been violated. And furthermore, I look back in the records to the previous October and the previous April, Barack Obama stated into the, into the, the, the news media record, he said Hillary Clinton would never intend to put our national security at risk. Hillary Clinton would never intend to harm America's security. That's October and April, the previous October and April. Well, James Comey latched on to that word intend, and they made up new law and gave Hillary Clinton an exemption for this lack of intent that they said they couldn't prove which is absolutely proven by the facts that he delivered to us in the summary that day and that there is evidence for. And I would go on. 
And not only does this trail lead through Hillary Clinton and James Comey, but the Loretta Lynch component of this as well. When you put this in place and you look at the example of them on the tarmac, it's hard to imagine they sat there for 38 minutes and discussed grandchildren. I think that might even be singular grandchild at the time. We should check that. Uh, but the, the answers that we got from Loretta Lynch were far less than satisfying. And then that brings me to Alexandra Chalupa, who went off as a, she was a DNC contractor that went off over to Ukraine to try to gather dirt on the, on the Trump people. So bringing this around, Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude it with this as my time will soon run out. And that is this, that the trail leads, I believe, also to the Barack Obama. We need to investigate all of this.